You're listening to Virtual for West with me, Tara McCarthy, and my co-host, Brittany Pasterbone. Today, we're talking with author, political commentator, and independent journalist, Mike Cernovich. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. It's a pleasure. So um, before all the politics, it's pretty well known that you generally focused on uh, relationship advice. So why is it that you decided to make the switch from that to politics? Good question. I'd always written about what I found interesting. So the number one advice I give to would-be writers and say, write about whatever interests you, because the internet is so big that no matter how narrow your interests are, there is going to be millions of people who want to read it. Mm -hmm. So I used to write about just bro stuff, going to the gym and going to Vegas pool parties. And that was where my mind was at at the time. And so that's what I wrote about. And then I got bored with that. You can only do that for so long until you're just hedonic burnout. Yeah. The, right. the, then, yeah, I mean, eventually that gets old. So I started working on, you know, mindset kind of stuff. So then I wrote more about mindset. Then I wrote Gorilla Mindset. And then the whole Trump thing came on. And I said, well, I really know that I'm going to be in jail by Hillary Clinton. And anybody who's a dissident thinker yeah. is going to be on. If we don't get Trump in, so then I moved to get Trump in, and then that evolved into me making a network, developing sources, and then I've been able to break major national security stories. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, it was kind of the same deal for me. I was like, well, you know, I could keep writing, but it's kind of do or die here, here with between Trump and Hillary Clinton, so it's kind of the same deal. So I get where you're coming from there. Yeah, actually, that um, I went to... Oh, sorry. I wanted to ask you, um, what's the number one mindset shift the right needs to make at the moment from your perspective? Oh, gosh. I mean, there are so many. The number one would be quit worrying about being liked so much. Mm -hmm. People are too focused on being liked rather than winning. And that is the reason the communication strategy for the right is so weak. Let's just win rather than worry about if the liberals and the left-wing media likes us. If you make that... If you just say, I want to win, and I'll do whatever it takes to win, assuming that it's not illegal, then you're going to go a lot further in life than if you worry about if you're being liked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some good advice. It's hard to do, though, because most people, mm -hmm. I mean, just innately, we care about human respect and what people think about us. So I guess it would take some work, but I mean it'd be great, you know, to, to, to not care what people think about you. I mean, I guess I do to an extent, but it's more like people on the left. Like, is it hard for you sometimes, Mike, to not care what people on the right think about you? Because like, it's one thing, obviously we don't care what the left thinks of us, but is it ever hard for you there? I mean, we all care. You know, that is, it's kind of like the person who says they're not afraid of anything is a liar or they're not challenging themselves hard enough. Mm -hmm. Fear never goes away. Our yes. desire to be liked by other people, to want to fit in in a hierarchy, to want to have a social group. Of course, when people write mean things about me and say that I'm saying all these things I've never said, it doesn't feel good. I don't like read it over 10 times because I'm really hyped up to read it. But you have to learn to overcome those primate impulses and to just care less. It's the same way as with fear. If you're not afraid a little bit every day, then that doesn't mean you're courageous. Mm -hmm. That means you're not challenging yourself and pushing yourself hard enough. So you're not, you're never going to, you're always going to want to be liked. If you're a human being, you are. But you have to think, what is the cost of being liked? Am I going to compromise who I am? You know, it's just the same thing with like girls and everything else is, you know, you might want a boy to like you, but if you, you know, he might want you to do things that you don't want to do. And then you have to decide where your boundaries are. And the same is true if you're in a political commentator or journalist is, Sure, it'd be great if everybody loved me, but if I have to compromise who I am and what I believe in to get their affection, then I would rather live true to myself. Right. So at this point, it seems like there is no line, no matter how degenerate, that the left won't cross. Um, where do you see the Western world being in about 10 years if the right doesn't step in and take the reins? Oh, I mean, complete and total degeneracy. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia be normalized. Every kind of vile, and pedophilia probably will be legal in a lot of areas, or it'll be a protected disability so that you will have pedophile teachers. That is coming. What they'll do is the left is trying to say that pedophilia should be treated as a sexual orientation. Yeah. If they win that war, then that would mean so-called non-contact pedophiles. So that's a pedophile who hasn't been caught raping a child yet. They would say that a non-contact pedophile would be protected 
under anti-discrimination laws, that would mean they would be in your daycare centers. They would be teaching you. They would be teaching your children. They would be Boy Scout and Girl Scout troop leaders. And there would be nothing you could do to stop that. That will definitely happen. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. they could just say you identify as that. And, and there, there's nothing you can do. I mean, just in the same way that they're doing it in all the other areas. Yeah, correct. There'll be a, there'll be a massive influx of you know rapists from the Middle East will come over here. It'll be just like it is in Sweden, everywhere else. If you have money, you'll be okay. You'll have your gated community for a while, mm-hmm. for a while. But in South Africa, you know, a lot of people have money, and they're still getting mugged and raped, and the children are being slaughtered. Mm-hmm. So it, it'll be it'll be over if the if the right doesn't win. It's all over for the West. Right. You actually went to South Africa, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Because we, we've really been thinking that we need to um, start exposing what's going on in South Africa because obviously the mainstream media just aren't uh, looking at it. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, how to start because obviously we're over here in Europe and America. So, mm-hmm. um, But, yeah, going back to the whole pedophilia thing, I mean, in Europe we're seeing them uh, allowing, the you know, the Muslim migrants, you know, old men to marry... 12 year olds etc so it's all fine and legit over in sweden or whatever um they've just like basically legalized pedophilia um because of to accommodate muslims um and yeah i mean it's the same with uh, female genital mutilation you know they just do that uh it's it's just an epidemic all over europe now um because of the migration here um and and they just kind of turn a blind eye. So the leftists really don't have any standards at all, do they? <laughs> Not at no, this point. They have no principles. Yeah, they they don't have they don't have any moral principles at all. Everything about them is nihilistic and destruction. So if you ever ask a liberal, what do you stand for? They'll go, well, I stand for tolerance. Well, taken to that extreme, that would mean you would have to tolerate pedophiles and rapists because it would be judgmental to hold anybody in any kind of moral standard. So again, that's where we're going. So as you notice, even Governor Chris Christie, or former Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey, he had said that he won't oppose child marriage. So child marriages are going to be coming to America also. They're fighting to lower the age of consent to 15, 14, 13, 12. Now, people can disagree about, you know, should the age of consent be 17 or 18 there's there's certain room for debate, but if yeah. you're talking about 14 or 15 years old, that mm-hmm. is super creepy. That is that is borderline pedophilia in my view. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of on that note, um, the left, you know, they demand that we be tolerant of them without while well, refusing us the same courtesy. So, do you think that the right has reached its limit for tolerance? Do you believe the time for tolerance is over? Well, you asked me the first question was what would be the biggest mindset shift the right needs to make? And I would say that that shift is not being made by enough people. So people on the right still do want to do, want to be liked by the left. And that's why we're losing. Two, the left knows they're fighting. That's what people don't understand is I, I can explain things from my heart, what I believe, but I can also explain things from um, like a tactician perspective. And I say from an amoral perspective, this isn't my view. This is just an amoral perspective. I respect the left way more than the right. The left will fight. The left will do whatever it takes to win. They'll play dirty. They'll do every dirty trick in the book to win. On the right, they won't. They want to be prim and proper. And what's worse, here's what's worse and here's what's frustrating to me is I'm willing to just play dirty rather than just shut up and let people like me and other freedom fighters, just leave us alone. What they do is then they try to attack us. The moderates say, oh, Cernovich, you're too wild, you're too extreme. Hey, how about you just either shut up or fight the left? But why in the world would you go after me? And that, again, is because of the weak mindset, the cuck mindset that the, the mainstream right has. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, this is like, a real yeah. problem, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's like... I guess seven times out of ten, you'll you'll see people in the right wing attacking other people in the right wing instead of the left. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have studies as well showing that um, 
leftists are more likely to ostracize people, cut them off social media if they have views they don't agree with, whereas right-wing people, especially right-wing men, are actually the most tolerant of people with other political views, which means that people who are leftists, they they don't care if they've like got that little communist badge on. They don't have any fear of losing their job. They say things like white people should be genocided or things like that, and and they have like zero fear. Or this uh, recent professor uh, saying some white people ne- might need to be killed in order to liberate blacks or something like this. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like oh, that's just free speech. It's all cool. Um, but you know, a student gives out some flyers saying love your people or whatever, and they you know they're Jump they're on you. done for life yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean Brittany, your pot you try to do like a 500 dollars gofundme right yeah it was 400 dollars, and like and and the articles the mainstream media wrote about me it was like the headline was something like you know alt right person you know girl tries to start raise money for a podcast and the internet revolts and i'm like the internet didn't revolt <laughs> basically judd legoom tweeted out a thing calling me a white nationalist and then all these you know all of his followers latched onto it no one revolted like it was stupid but um but yeah. i mean they kicked you off though right just, oh um... yeah 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 they completely banned me and, and refunded everything yeah they attack your livelihood everything they, there's no level you know there's no depths that they won't go to to try and shut mm-hmm. us down but you know, I got over it pretty fast. I didn't even know who this guy was, but obviously he, there, there's people that just probably follow, you know, all of our accounts and just like watch yeah, out for opportunities. Media matters. Yeah. yeah, you know, the thing progress and media matters people do. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm doing today. I've even played games where I would tweet something and then I'll delete it like five seconds later and they'll have screen captures. Mm-hmm. So if I, mm-hmm. this wasn't even now, now I'm sure it's within like a half a second. But oh. within... To ten seconds, they'll ha- they would have a screenshot of anything I would tweet. So I would tweet like just ridiculous things I didn't even believe, and then I would delete it. And then I wanted to see who have it. And they all they have it. That's how they've been monitoring us for of course mm. years. That's so creepy. <laughs> oh my god! Well, yeah. we're all on lists. We're just yeah. yeah. Well, did you make the Swedish list? The 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 yeah, Sweden list? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So so what is that exactly? It's basically we're on a watch list for threatening you know migrants lgbt and women so what does that mean exactly i don't even know that's the whole nature of george orwellian they'll never tell you what rule you violated that's the way the left plays yeah there's no objective rule they because they if they just said hey man you can't do this you can do that Mm -hmm. then i would say okay maybe i'll play by the rules but Mm -hmm. they won't tell you what the rules are they constantly shift so what I did is um, Jack Posobiec went into Malmo, the no-go zones in Switzerland, to investigate the rape and the murders and the terrorism, the assaults and the car bombings, which they call car fires, which is fascinating, even though it's terrorism. Mm-hmm. So I sent Jack Posobiec out there to do a project for Cernovich Media and Cerno Films, and we did it. We called it Invasion, how Sweden became the rape capital of the West. And it was very logical, fact-based, all film, no fiction. And that is what got us on their watch list. Wow. Oh. That's crazy. Tara and I actually interviewed Jack on, on this topic um, yeah. as, as the documentary was coming out. So that's very interesting. That maybe just yeah. anyone who's spoken out or raised, you know, any issue with what's going on in Sweden. Because we've all been doing that for a while. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it really is. Um, I, I, it's literally having dissenting views puts you on a list. Mm-hmm. for people to monitor you or something yeah. so it's so, very disappointing I think you know yeah. to see how these western values of like freedom of speech you know you know debate and pro- having political ideas etc it's like oh no you can't have those you're one of the bad evil people we're going to put you on a list mm-hmm. it's really oh. but it's not surprising <laughs> so kind of switching gears um how has a husband and a father uh, changed you? Do you have any? Are you willing not to much, share? Really. No, not re- not much. No, there. Um, so the, the having a daughter has slowed me down definitely because I'm crashing into things all the time. I don't really pay attention where I walk. <laughs> it's because I'm so in my head. But when yeah. you're holding a baby, you can't just be a, a. So I'm somebody who lives in my head all the time. I just walk around and think, and then I bump into a lot of things. Mm-hmm which people would think would be clumsy, but the truth is I would just always be thinking, well, now when you're holding a baby, and it'd be the same if I had a son too, you're 
you can't just slam into things, right? So you have to be very careful and very calm. So that has definitely um, slowed me down in, in ways, which is a good way. In, in terms of being, you know, any kind of any time long term relationship, you know, as women will tell you, is, you know, women are always going to love a man who has a mission. And then the problem that men have is they find a woman and then they make her the focal point of his life. And then the woman falls out of love and finds that suffocating and just kind of gross and weak and everything else. So you're always finding the balance between, you know, paying attention to the person you're with, your romantic partner, but also focusing on your life mission and your life vision because the minute you lose sight of that vision, that's when you lose your identity as a man, and that's when everything in the life and, and then, of course, the relationship is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Kind of on that note, are you, are you working on a new book? Are you going to put any new books out soon? Well, yeah, so the book I've been working on is called Audacity, How to Go from Nobody to Somebody. And it's going to cover everything from mindset to marketing to branding that anybody from the makeup girls on YouTube to the gym bros on Instagram to political activists like you can pick up and then apply to your own, your own area. So that's one reason. The reason I haven't launched it yet is I thought that I peaked last year. I thought, all right. So, you know, I hit a high enough point that I can credibly talk about how that you can build your own brand up. You can get your own message out, right? Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, I'm on 60 Minutes. And the next thing you know, I'm in the White House. And I'm thinking, well, okay, let's see what else I accomplish <laughs> before I launch the book. So by the time you get the book, you'll have a guy who – and I wanted to build up my YouTube also because my YouTube was small. So I wanted to have a big YouTube, and I'm growing too. I'm at like 45,000 subscribers when I only had 10,000 subscribers a couple months ago. So I said, all right, so I want the big social media, the big YouTube, books that sold a lot. Now I've done all the TV stuff. I've done the journalism stuff. I've done the activism stuff. So now anybody can pick the book up and say, all right, I'm going to apply this to my life because there's a lot to it, like how do you deal with haters? How do you deal with criticism? How do you know who you are? How do you find your identity? How do you live your authentic truth and share your authentic truth when the world is pushing back to you? When do you compromise? There's a lot of, it's a head game, right? Mm -hmm. You have to really have your head into the game and have your mindset right to do anything online because people, I mean, I mean, you, Brittany, you had to do a, an interview where you denied lies that you were in an affair with a married man, right? Yeah, ridiculous. Honestly, I would have just ignored that whole thing. I didn't even want to have to do that. But And it, if it was just anonymous trolls, fine. But there were actually like prominent alt-right blogs talking about this. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just come out and say something. Because I'd said nothing. And then, yeah, it was really uncomfortable to have to do that. Because I don't like to share. Like I don't even like to talk about my personal life in any way. But obviously people have the entirely wrong idea so I just had to go out clear the air and that's that I hope it's behind me I'm not even gonna address it anymore because it's just so ridiculous but yeah it was horrible well and that's the point though was the head games these guys they wrote articles that I was a tourist having sex with transsexuals all across the world and everything and you know so to me I don't even respond to it because one is it was a lie and if I had I would have written about it that's the thing that cracks me up is Oh, they, people always think they're digging up dirt about me. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. I've actually talked about that. But that is, again, about keeping your head in the game and knowing when you have to address the drama and the liars and the haters and the fake news people and when not to. And the right answer to that, of course, is you only do it when it's going to boost your profile. So if it's little nobodies snipping at my ankles, I don't say anything because I'm not going to increase my views. I'm actually going to increase their views. That is why they're making up stuff about me, right? So the only people I, you know, the way I always tell people is I go, Christian Bale did an interview with the Daily Beast where he told the Daily Beast he's obsessed with me and just hates my guts and, you know, thinks about me all the time. So I'm thinking, all right, so I got A-list Hollywood actors gunning for me. George Soros is gunning for me. I don't have time for some random losers spreading mess, um, rumors on me at like vote.com or whatever, you know, whatever that site is. So, but again, that, that's the kind of stuff that would be an audacity is there's a strategy to when you reply to things and when you don't. Yeah, that's well, 
and it happens all the time. I don't know if this is in your experience too, Tara, but just like any time I post a picture with a guy, I get the same thing. Not, yeah, at, this, yeah. not at this it, level, it, of course. <laughs> not at this level, of course. So even yeah. if I interview a guy alone on my channel, I get the same thing. Oh, Brittany likes this yeah. guy. It's just like, People I'm just, just trying like to be, I'm just, trying to be personal. Want like, I want to be kind. Should I be like a robot? You know, that like this mechanical creature interviewing people? Like, I just want to be nice. Like, I, I don't know. I, I People just like speculating. It's it's harmless. Well, I think it's harmless, but I know that you don't like it damaging your image and stuff. Um, but I have this yeah. burning question I really want to ask Mike, which is, um, um, what is the biggest question? What is the biggest weakness of the left right now, and how do we capitalize on it? Ooh, good question. The biggest weakness of the left is the identity politics and victim Olympics. So I had long said, and I think a lot of people have done this actually, and I won't comment if I had. About a year and a half ago, I said, you know what we should do is we should create sock puppet accounts on Twitter that are SJWs where you say, no, I'm actually a black, queer, gender nonconforming, this or whatever, and how dare you try to, to crowd me out. So that's how we're destroying them is through the sowing dissent. An example would be they wanted to have as a DNC chair a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, right? So the left, instead of learning why they lost the election, they now wanted Tom Perez and then a member of the Muslim Brotherhood to lead them. Well, that's fantastic because now they're so focused on who is the biggest victim, mm -hmm. who is you know, the most oppressed person, who is the winner of the Privilege Olympics, that they're not focused on winning. That kind of infighting is by far the biggest weakness of the left and it's their greatest vulnerability. Mm. What would you say about the left actually co-opting movements? Because I'm into some like Eastern spirituality and veganism and things like this. And SJWs are literally taking over. Like they're literally putting themselves in positions of power in these organizations and starting to dictate things. They've got their own, putting their own vocabulary into everything. And um, I'm actually kind of worried because I, you know, I value those things and I don't want them taken over. But what can you do? Well, Vox, they wrote a book called SJWs Always Lie, and he talks about, it's called SJW, SJW Entryism, and that is what they do. You start an organization, they enter it, and they're, oh yeah, we'll volunteer, and then the, the mission goes away from veganism or fitness or whatever it is, and then the mission becomes, how can we be more SJW friendly? That is actually what destroyed the atheism movement. Mm -hmm. The atheism movement with Chris Hitchinson, um, Chris Hitchens is now dead, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, and one other guy. They're like the four, uh, Bill, I don't know who they are, the four horsemen. Well, mm -hmm. all these feminists and SJWs like Rebecca Watson came in, and once that happens, it's over because the, a big um, thing happened years ago called Elevator Gate. So Rebecca Watson was an SJW atheist. She went to an elevator. A guy in the elevator goes, hey, you know, you want to come to my room and get coffee? And then she makes that into like a big thing. Oh, my God, misogyny. Maybe he was going to rape me in the elevator, even though it's a hotel and there are cameras everywhere. It's like, get out of here, right? Go walk in a no-go zone and then and talk about what the real damage is. So the issue is once you get these SJW women in there, I won't, you know, I wouldn't be around them because who knows what they're going to accuse you of. So what they took over, the SJW women took over, and then that's why Sargon and – uh, Thunderfoot and others became sort of anti-feminist because they were actually very hardcore atheists, especially Thunderfoot. They were hardcore atheists, and then the SJWs came over, completely ruined the organization because no man is going to be in a group where you might be accused of rape for, for nothing. You might be called, have your whole livelihood and reputation destroyed on the Internet. So then what happens is the actual people who are getting things done go far away from it, and then the movement is destroyed, and they're implodes on itself mm -hmm. yeah. I mean that it's so dangerous it's so scary because one accusation from a woman about something like that and most people just believe it's like you know trial by you know average people on the internet trial by internet and your reputation whether it's true or not can be completely dragged through the red and mud and ruined forever like it's always these kind of cases pretty scary so um, what's your advice to aspiring independent journalists you gotta go where the action is man you mm -hmm. gotta go there's always something going on. You got to get off Twitter and you got to go, you know, you did it. You went to Paris, Jack Posobiec with the Antifa, you know, obviously don't just run out. Like I've done things that are kind of reckless, but I'm also, you know, 210 pound, six foot one, you know, man. So it's a little different, but mm -hmm. 
even even then I've been a little you know kind of dangerous, probably should, dodgy situations. So the thing is, people want more news and less commentary. And there's too much commentary on the right. Oh, I read this article, and here's my comments, and here's my thoughts, and everything. Commentary is great. Don't get me wrong. I do a lot of commentary. Probably, probably 75% of what I do is commentary. So I'm not, I'm not shading your commentary, but definitely do real journalism. If there's something going on, go there or find the live streams and comment on the live streams as they happen. That's good advice. Yeah, I've just recently started like going on the ground because I think it's a lot more effective that way if you're actually there live streaming something that's happening. So, yeah, yeah you know, I'm total chicken. Fun. Sorry, I'm not going because I'm because we anti fair and everything. And, well, yeah, uh, you don't have to, but then um, you can always go with people and kind of keep your distance. And once they racket like me, I can't go to that stuff anymore. But they won't recognize you, and if you just kind of keep your mouth shut and stream what happens. You're fine. You know, you know, like what I, I'll heckle them. Jack Posobiec will heckle them. That's not good advice. Don't, don't <laughs> go like we do and say, "Oh, you're, you're a cuck," or "Bill Clinton's a rapist," or something. Don't do anything like that. But you can go and just live stream and take good pictures, do good journalism. That is what people want. People want those live on the ground reports, but and there aren't that many people doing it. So those who do it have a major competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So um, is there anything that you want to let us know about that you have coming up this year? Anything big? Uh, I'm doing a movie on media hoaxes. Oh, Hoax. sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I just got the trailer released for that. Yeah, last year I did a book. I did, you know, I keep busy. You know, people. So last year I did a book on Trump, MAGA Mindset, which I thought was a pretty great book. And it's got great reviews on Amazon. Didn't sell as much as Gorilla Mindset did, which was actually surprising to me. I also did a documentary on free speech called Silence last year, in addition to everything else. So this year, I want to do another documentary and another book. And I think I can. It's going to be, it's going to be tough, but I think we can get hoaxed out by October. And I think we can get Audacity out in November in time for the Christmas holidays. So if I can get a book out this year and another film, then I'll be pretty excited. Very cool. Looking forward to it. Tara, do you, have you. Any more, do you have any more questions? Oh, no. Um, I just want to say thanks to Mike for taking the time. I know you have a very busy schedule at the moment and a new baby. So thanks for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, yeah I've watched a couple of your episodes. It's good. I, um, I watched the one with Levi, a poll, and I've watched a couple of them. So you guys, are, you girls are doing great work. So keep it up. Don't let the haters get you down, man. They're going to go. <laughs> right. Thanks, got Mike. I mean, I've, I've been recently accused of helping. I, I filed a lawsuit to try to, to go after some court records to expose pedophilia. Now people are claiming that I'm actually in cahoots with them. Other people are claiming that when I do the OK sign, half the media said this is a white power sign. And then there's videos claiming it's a 666, so it's uh. actually a sign. That's the thing, man. But you can't, you can't let that get you down. The conspiracy, the bigger your profile goes, the more conspiracy theories that are going to be about you, who cares? You got to focus on your own vision. Keep pushing forward. Let people say what they're going to say and laugh it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're never going to win all the way. I mean, in the sense that you're never going to please everyone. So might as well just, you know, go after your own goals and just not look back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that said, we, we actually, yeah, we've come to the end of our show now. It's been really great to have you, though, Mike. Where's the best place for our viewers to um, find out more about your work? You can go to Amazon.com and find Gorilla Mindset, MAGA Mindset, Silenced, all my books that are on Amazon. You can also find me at Twitter.com forward slash Cernovich, C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H. You can also find me at Medium.com forward slash the app sign, Cernovich. So there's all kinds of different ways to find me there. Um, I also have YouTube, a YouTube thing. So we're, we're busy. But if you go to twitter.com forward slash Cernovich, that'll get you in the pipeline and let you know what we got going on. Thanks again, ladies. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Great. And I will link all your links below so um, people can find it easier. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much once again, Mike. And um, we will let you go now. Perfect. Bye. All right. Bye.